this lecture will be the last lecture for the part on open channel. In this lecture, we're going to look into gradually varied flow. When it comes to solving problems regarding gradually varied flow, we will use the following assumptions. Number one, the head loss for a specific ridge is equal to the head loss in the ridge for a uniform flow having the same hydro radius and average velocity. Number two, the slope of the channel is so small that the depth of flow is the same whether it is measured vertically or perpendicular to the bottom. Number three, there is no A entertainment. Number four, the velocity distribution on the channel section is fixed. Therefore, alpha, the kinetic energy correction factor, is constant. And number five, the resistance coefficient is independent of depth of flow and constant throughout the ridge under the considerations. We also need to be able to classify the different type of slopes when it comes to solving this gradually varied flow problem. For a given channel and discharge, the normal depth and the critical depth can be determined by the method as described in the previous lectures using the either the normal depth curves or the critical depth curves. The normal depth of flow may be less than, equal to, or greater than the critical depth. For a given channel shape and roughness, only one value of slope will produce the critical depth and this is known as the critical slope. If the slope is steeper than the critical slope, then the flow will be supercritical and the slope is termed a steep slope. Conversely, if the slope is less steep than the critical slope, then the flow will be subcritical and the slope is termed mild slope. In solving the problem for gradually varied flow, we can use the expression as shown in the equation for this slide, where dy equal to dx is equal to the channel bottom slope minus the energy line slope divided by 1 minus the fruit number square. This is, it is called the general equation for gradually varied flow. This equation will give the slope of the water surface relative to the bed. There is no general explicit solution for this equation. Hence, we need to use numerical methods to solve uh, gradually varied flow problems. As mentioned earlier, before we solve the problem for gradually varied flow, we need to know the classification of the slope and also the flow profile. So, when it comes to the flow profile, the surface profile may occupy three different regions and the signs of the equation dy over dx can be found for each of the region. For region 1, the flow depth is higher than the normal depth and the normal depth is higher than the critical depth. In this case, the energy line slope is larger than the bottom channel slope and the flow number square is less than 1, hence the dy over dx will have a positive value. For region 2, the normal depth will be larger than the flow depth and the flow depth will be larger than the critical depth. The energy line slope will be larger than the channel bottom slope and the value of the fruit number square will be less than 1. Hence, dy over dx is negative. For region 3, the normal depth will be larger than the critical depth and the critical depth will be larger than the flow depth. The energy line slope will be larger than the channel bottom slope. Hence, the dy over dx is positive. For a mild slope, in this case, the normal depth will be larger than the critical depth 
The surface profile may occupy the three region above and the side of dy over dx can be found for each of the region. This slide here shows the classification for the three regimes according to the different types of slope. You can have a horizontal slope, mild slope, critical slope, steep slope, and also adverse slope. Normally, for the problem of gradually varied flow, we will encounter either mild slope or steep slope. For mild slope, you will see that the normal depth line is higher than the critical depth line while for the steep slope the critical depth line will be higher than the normal depth line for a region one m1 profile means that the mild slope profile the flow depth will be larger than the normal depth and the normal depth will be larger than the critical depth the Energy slope is less than the channel bed slope and the float number squared is less than 1. Hence, dy over dx is positive, so it is a backwater curve. As the flow depth approaching infinity, the energy line slope and the float number is approaching 0 and the dy over dx value is approaching the channel bed slope value. Hence, the water surface is asymptotic to a horizontal line. For the flow depth approaching the normal depth value and the energy line approaching the channel slope value, the dy over dx value approaching zero. Hence, the water profile is asymptotic to the line y equal to yn. This water surface profile is termed as M1 profile is a type of profile which would occur behind a dam. For region 2, M2 profile, the normal depth is higher than the flow depth and the flow depth is higher than the critical depth. The energy line slope is larger than the channel bottom slope and the float number square value is less than 1. Hence, dy over dx is negative. The flow profile is a drawdown. This is known as M2 profile. When the, the Y approaching critical depth value and dy over dx approaching infinity, the flow profile will be vertical in crossing the vertical depth line. This is physically impossible and in this case, the fluid enters a region of rapidly varied flow. It is a drawdown curve. While for region 3 or M3 profile, when the flow depth y approaching critical depth dy over dx is approaching infinity and this is physically impossible and a hydrate jump will form before the y equal to the same value as the critical flow depth for bed of steep slope it is denoted as the s profiles in these profiles the channel bottom slope is larger than the critical slope and the uniform flow depth is less than the critical flow depth. The S1 profile usually begins with a jump at the upstream boundary and terminates with a profile tangent to a horizontal at the downstream boundary. For example, flow behind a dam built in a steep channel. The S2 profile is a drawdown curve and is usually very short. At the draw Downstream boundary, this profile is tangent to the normal depth flow. This type of profile can occur downstream of an enlargement of a channel section and also downstream of a slope transition from a steep to steeper. The S3 profile is also transitional in that it connects a supercritical flow with normal depth. Such a profile may occur at a slope transition between steep and mild or below a sluice gate on a steep slope gate on a steep slope where the water initially flows at a depth less than the normal. Whereas for the critical bed or C profile, in this profile, 
the channel bottom slope is equal to the critical slope and the normal flow depth is equal to the critical flow depth. The C1 profile is asymptotic to a horizontal line. A profile connecting a channel of critical slope with a channel of mass slope. While the C3 profile can connect a supertical flow with a reservoir pool on a critical slope. As for the bed of horizontal slope, the hash profile, in this case, the channel slope is equal to zero and the hash profiles can be considered to be a limiting case of the M profiles. The H2 drawdown profile can be found upstream of a 3 over 4, while the H3 profile can connect the supercritical flow below a switch gate with a reservoir pool. For adverse slope, this profile has the channel bed slope less than zero. In general, the A2 and A3 profile occur only frequently and are similar to the H2 and H3 profiles. When it comes to determining or plotting the different different flow profiles, these are the following principles regarding the gradually varied flow profiles. Number one, the sine of dy over dx can be readily determined from equation three. Number two, the water surface profile approaching normal depth, it does so asymptotically. Number three, when the water surface profile approaches critical depth, it closes this depth at a large but finite angle. Number four, if the flow is subcritical upstream but passes through critical depth, then the future which produces critical depth determines the, and locates the whole water surface profile. If the upstream flow is supercritical, in the case of an M3 profile, then the control cannot come from downstream. And number five, in channels with horizontal and adverse slopes, the terminology normal to the depth of the flow has no meaning, since the normal depth of flow is either negative or imaginary. However, in these cases, the numerator of equation three is negative and the shape of the profile can be deduced. For the computation of gradually varied flow, it should proceed upstream from the control section in subcritical flow and downstream from the control section in supercritical flow. There are actually various numerical methods which can be used to calculate the gradually varied flow profile. But for the purpose of this lecture, we're going to look into two methods, namely the direct step method and the standard step method. The direct step method is a simple method applicable to prismatic channel. The flow depth are specified first in this method and the distance between the successive depths are calculated. So in other words, we will specify what are the depth for the profile and only then we calculate the distance between the flow depth profile. In direct step method, again, if we use the Bernoulli equations between two sections, the total head at section one will be equal to the total head at section two. So by writing out that expression, S naught delta x plus y1 plus alpha 1 v1 square over 2g equal to y2 plus alpha 2 v2 square over 2g plus sf delta x we can rearrange these equations to have delta x equal to ES1 means that the specific energy at section 1 minus ES2 or the specific energy at section 2 divided by the channel bottom slope minus the energy line slope. The energy line slope can be obtained from the remaining equations as SF equal to N square Q square over 8 square R to power 4 over 3. In the computation for the energy line slope, it is calculated for depth Y1 and Y2 and the average energy line slope is 
taken. Let us take a look at this example for direct step method. In this example, a trapezoidal channel has a bed width b equal to 5 meter, the channel bed slope of 0 0.0004, side slope m equal to 2 horizontal to 1 vertical, and the manning's roughness n equal to 0 0.02. The normal depth of flow y not is equal to 3 meter. If the channel empties into a pool at the downstream end and the pool elevation is 1.25 meter higher than the channel bed elevation at the downstream end, calculate the gradually varied flow profile up to a depth of 2.96 meter by direct step method, assuming alpha equal to one. So for uniform flow, given the question, why not is equal to three meter. So from there, because this is a trapezoidal shape, we can calculate the flow area, which will give you as thirty three meter square. The weighted perimeter equal to eighteen point four one meter, and the hydro radius which is A over P equal to 1.793 meter. So from there, the discharge, we can calculate it by using the Manning's equation. 1 over N, A R 2 third square root of S. So in this case, if we substitute in the value for A, P, R, and also N and S, we can get the discharge as 48.7 meter cube per second. Then we need to find the critical depth. To find the critical depth, we can refer to the method in the previous lecture on rapidly varied flow where there is a critical depth curves given in that lecture slides. So from there we can actually calculate the critical depth or YC. So if we use that method we will find that the YC is equal to 1.69 meter. So after we have calculated that, then we actually can create a table as shown as in this slide. The explanation of how to get the value for the numbers in the tables are given in the previous slides. Since the flow profile is an M2 curve where the critical depth is equal to 1.69 as the control at the downstream end, the calculations are carried out upstream. The depth will range between 1.69 meter to 2.96 meter, which as stated in the questions for you to find the profile we can actually divide the deep range into nine reaches. This one is actually up to you how many reaches you want to do the divisions. So once we have done that, then we can create a table as shown in these slides. Column one actually shows the nominated depths. Like I mentioned just now, you take the range between 1.69 meter to 2.96 meter and divide it into nine reaches. You can actually divide it into equally or uneven. It doesn't matter. Then from there, you can do the calculations for A, R, V, and also the specific energy E using the appropriate equations. For example, A is the cross-sectional area for trapezoidal, then you have to use the equation for trapezoidal shapes to find the A. Same case also for the R. For the V, you can actually use the Manning's equations. And for the E, E is actually the specific energy. You can use the equation of Y plus V squared over 2G to find the E. 
Then for column six, this one here actually shows the difference in the special energy or delta E of the two successive values of E. So in other words, to find the value for column six, you need to, to get the difference between the previous profile with the subsequent profile, the E value for the previous profile with the subsequent profile. So for in this case, for example, for the first line for the profile of 1.69, the E value that you calculated is 2.2930. While for the subsequent profile, when the Y is equal to 1.80, you find that the E is 2.3045. So if you get the difference between these two value, you will get the difference of E as equal to 0 0.0115. Then for column number seven, this one here is actually you calculate the, the, the slope, the friction slope. The friction slope is actually equal to n square v square divided by r to the power of 4 over 3. This equation actually comes from the Manning's equation but you, the equations for to find the velocity for the Manning's equations. Then the average of the two successive friction slope is entered as a bar SF, you enter it in column F. So again, this one here is once you calculated the friction slope for the previous profile and also the subsequent profile, like for in this case, the SF for the profile at 1.69 meter, you get as 0.004027, while the SF for the profile Y equal to 1. When add is 0 0.003151. So if you get the average for these two values, it will get you as 3.5 at 9 times 10 to the power of negative 3 for the column add. Then for column 9, column 9 here, you use the channel back slope, which is S0 multiply by the average uh, friction slope SF value just now. So in other words, you use 0 0.0004 multiplied by the value in the column add. That will get you as column 9. While column 10 contains the delta X calculated by dividing column 6 with column 9. The last column contains the cumulative distances from the starting point of y equal to 1.69 meter. So it's actually just cumulative out. For example, like when you start at 1.69 is zero, but when you come to the subsequent y depth of 1.8, it's actually 3.6 meter away. This one is we calculated from the column 10 but when it comes to when y equal to two meter sections the delta x means that the distance between the the profile of two meter to 1.8 meter the difference is negative 31 meter so if you want to get for the column 11 you need to use your 3.6 meter just now plus the 31 meter, it will get you as 34.6 meter. So you perform the calculations until you get the profile of Y equal to 2.96 meter as required in the question just now. The next method we're going to look into is the standard step method. This standard step method is applicable to non prismatic channels. In other words, the channel is irregular, such as natural rivers. For this method, 
the station positions are predetermined first and the objective is to calculate the surface elevation hence the depth at the stations so these methods is different from the direct step method which you have seen previously in the direct step method we determine the surface profile or the floor depth first and then we calculate the distance between the floor depth while for this standard step method you determine the horizontal distance and then from there you calculate the depth so for this standard step method if we use the Bernoulli equations between two sections section 1 and section 2 if we refer these two sections to a datum then the upper equations as shown in the slide here is applicable namely z2 plus y2 plus alpha v2 square over 2g equal to z1 plus y1 plus alpha v1 square over 2g plus sf delta x however if let's say now instead of referring to the data term we refer to the downstream point as your reference point in other words the section one the bottom channel as section one as your data term then you will have the second expression which is sf delta x plus y1 plus alpha v1 square over 2g equal to z2 plus y2 plus alpha v2 square over 2g plus s0 delta x by taking z1 equal to y1 and z2 equal to y2 plus s0 delta x we can do the substitution to get z1 plus alpha v1 square over 2g plus sf delta x equal to z2 plus alpha v2 square over 2g then by writing that h1 equal to z1 plus alpha v1 square over 2g and h2 equal to z2 plus alpha v2 square over 2g we can finally obtain h1 plus sf delta x equal to h2 proceeding upstream in the subcritical flow h1 is known and delta x is predetermined z2 is estimated and y2 is calculated from y2 equal to z2 minus the small z2 h2 is then calculated if h2 verify the above equation within the prescribed limits then the estimated z2 is the right one if not then you have to re-estimate the z2 and repeat until agreement is reach the determined z2 and h2 becomes z1 and h1 for the succeeding station this example will demonstrate how to use the standard step method to solve gradually varied flow problems in this example a small stream has a cross section which can be approximated by a trapezoid shape the cross sectional properties at three sections are as follows at section a the distance up the river in kilometer is 100 bed elevation is 100 bed width is 14 and the side slope is 1.5 to 1. at section b distance up the river is 102 and the bed elevation is 100.8 bed width is 12.5 and the side slope is 1.5 to 1 and at section c the distance up the river is 100 and 3.5 the bed elevation is 101.4 and the bed width is 10 meter while the side slope is 1.5 to 1 so section a is the downstream most section for a discharge of 100 meter cube per second in the stream water surface elevation at a was 104.5 meter estimate the water surface elevation 
at the upstream sections B and C and assume that your N is equal to 0 0.02 and alpha equal to 1 at all the sections. If we look at the back width here, since section B and C are upstreams and section A are downstream, section A has larger back width as compared to B and also C, we can see that there's actually an expansion of the back width. Before we proceed with these questions, we actually need these two equations listed at the slide. These are the equation 5.39 and equation 5.41. So equation 5.39, SF is equal to N square V square over R to the power of 4 over 3, or in other words, is equal to N square Q square divided by A square R power 4 over 3, while equation 5.41 is to find the difference in the flow profile of delta y2 equal to negative he divided by in the bracket 1 minus in the bracket 1 plus c e which is the expansion coefficient multiplied by f 2 square plus 1.67 sf square multiplied by delta x divided by r2 So, to solve this problem, this slide here actually gives the explanation for the value in each of the columns. To solve this problem, we again need to create a table. The reason why for the equation SF, there's a 4 divided by A squared over R to the power of 4 over 3. How do you get the 4 is from n square multiplied by the q square. So from there, you will get the value for the first row. Then you can you go to the second row, which is the first trial. So for the first trial, for the column of 1b, you put there 1. And then the elevation of the bed because it did give you in the question as 100.8, so you write there 100.8, then the floor depth here, the floor depth here is actually based on your assumption or assume. So, for example, at column 4 for H the stage, you assume it as 105.8. Two, then if you use 105.2 minus 100.8 you will get the y def as 4.4 then from there to find column 5 which is the floor area you can use the equation for the floor cross section for trapezoidal will get you the value of 84.4 then column 6 is just b square over 2g which will get you as 0 0.072 while for column 7 which is the total head to get the value for this column for the first trial you use the value in column 4 which is 105.2 plus the value in column 6 which is 0 0.072 this will get you as the value in column 7 105.272 then for column 8 the r is the hydraulic radius which is a over p you can use the equations for trapezoidal shape to find your r value and for the column number 9, the SF, again you can use the equation of SF equal to 4 divided by the cross-sectional area of the floor A square 
and also divided by the r to power of 4 over 3 4 over 2 sorry then from there if you want to get the column number 10 column number 10 here is actually the average sf value in other words you get the value from the previous column 9 plus the value from the current column 9 and then you divide by 2 you will get column number 10 so like in this case for the first trial you get the value from the previous column 9 which is 1.0197 plus the value for the current column 9 which is 1.3308 then you divide it by 2 you will get the value for the column 10 which is 1.1752 then for the length of the reach because it's given in the question for section b the distance up the river is 102 while for section a is 100 so the difference between the distance for these two section is two kilometer so two kilometer if you convert it into meter you will get us two thousand meter then for column 12 for column 12 hf you use the value in column 10 multiplied by the value in column 11 this will get you as 0 0.235 for column 13 to find the he this one if you refer to the previous slide on the explanation it gives you the equation for the he is equal to ce which is the coefficient for expansion we take it as 0 0.3 multiplied by delta v square over 2g so with that we will get you as 0 0.004 for the total head in column 14 it is obtained as the column 7 of the previous section so in this case the value of 104.558 plus the value for column 12 and column 13 of the present section in other words 0 0.3 0, sorry 0 0.235 for column 12 plus 0 0.004 which will get you the total head of 104.797 then for column 15 to obtain the value in column 15 you get the value in column 7 minus the value in column 14 in other words 105.2 72 minus 104.797 this will get you the value of he which is in the column 15 as 0 0.475 to get the value in column 16 which is delta y2 we use the equations 5.41 so if we substitute the value into the equation of 5.41 you will get the value of negative 0 0.429 so if we see from here that the value that we assume early on it actually have quite a big difference when it comes to the delta y2 value so for the next trial we will use the value of 105.2 which is the initial value that we assume minus with this 0 0.429 to get us the new value for the column 4 for the stage so in this case for the second trial the hash stage value in column 4 is 104.771 
So from there, if we minus this value with the elevation bet at section B, which is 100.8, you will get the Y depth value as 3.971. And you repeat again the calculations. And if we later on, we find out that the difference in the value for the column 15 and 16 is very small, then we can stop the trial and error. That is how we do the calculation using the standard step methods. Anyway, if you look into the internet, there are actually a lot of forms or Excel file that has been developed to use the direct step method and standard step method to solve this gradually very pro problems. I am going to upload a sample Excel file using the standard step methods in the ellipse for you to try out to use the Excel file to solve the gradually varied flow. You can also create your own Excel file to solve this type of problems. With that, I end the lecture. Thank you.